Assalamu alaikum. Hi there, it's me Nicola, English woman abroad in Morocco. Talking to you today from sunny Essaouira. Um, slightly windy as usual, but then that's what all you surfers love about Essaouira. Um, and I have come via Grand Taxi and Supra Tour bus from Azalao. So after I had my vaccination, I decided to pack my bag and come and spend a few days in there. Very excited because I've come to collect the papers for my apartment and I'm going to show you around. So let's go in. The steps here, put the key in. He's here in my hand and my little card from Aswak Asalam. They send me emails with special offers. So that's great. So here we are, come in the front door and as you can see, there's not a lot to see. So it's completely unfurnished. Um, we have a salon here which I'm actually planning to turn into a bedroom. You can see the window there. And if you follow me around here, just here, I'm going to put some kind of um, door or something and a wardrobe in the corner here. You can see um, over here, nice big mirror, which I find myself looking in every time I walk past, which isn't a good thing. And here is the bathroom. Um, I know this is not common in Morocco, but there is a bath. I love a bath and I haven't had one for such a long time. Okay, back out here. Uh, this is another salon. But this one has a nice little patio door out to the balcony here. And you can see the view. And a palm tree right outside the window. So this is a nice big open space with a nice wall there for a, a big, big TV. Over here you can see evidence that I've been out shopping. Um, I bought myself a fridge freezer. This is my beautiful lime green kitchen. And there you will see the tagine. If you've been here before, you will have seen the tagine and you'll know that at some stage I'm going to cook you one. So let me know what you want. Fish, chicken. So that's the kitchen and the laundry area. And next we have another great big mirror. Oh no, too many opportunities to look at myself. Bedroom number one, which again at the moment is empty all but a blanket, a pillow, and two mattresses. And a nice big wardrobe, patio door, with shutter that's not currently working, so I need to get that fixed. And then into bedroom number two. Again, not a lot in here apart from the mattress, but this one has a nice patio door out onto the balcony at the front and yes, another palm tree. And we also have a wardrobe here and another bathroom. This one just with the shower. So, that is my apartment. Um, I hope you've enjoyed having a look around and maybe um, you'll enjoy furnishing it with me and seeing how it changes from um, a blank canvas into what will hopefully be a beautiful home. So you've seen the apartment and now you can see the view from the roof terrace. So you can see us Awira here and the seagulls again, they're getting all the videos. Um, and then coming round towards the left here, you can see what we all come to Essaouira for, the sea. There it is in the distance, not too far from the apartment, so I'll take you down and we'll walk down to the beach. So here we are um, in 
the street that is the quickest route for me to probably my most favourite place in Essaouira, the beach of course. Um, I think you can see here that there are two or three really nice cafes. Um, I can come here for breakfast, lunch and dinner if I want to. It's the quick, this is the quickest route for me to get to the beach and it maybe takes just five minutes, perhaps a little bit more. I've come out this way this morning to show you the little cafes, but normally I come out of this gate here, which is a little bit closer. So I'm almost at the end of the street now. Um, you can see down this end of the street, there are some shops. Um, some windsurfing places, so very popular here for, for windsurfers and also some cafes and some nice little shops and as I say we're almost at the end of the street now where we get our first little view of probably the main reason why a lot of people come here you see it's quite busy this morning, there's people walking in the streets, people eating their breakfast and just people generally walking up and down. I don't know if you can see down the end of the street there, the palm trees um, and the lovely promenade along the front which we will get to in a moment. And here we are on the promenade, so we've just come down um, this little street here and you can see along the main road there there's lots of more little cafes so more opportunities for a lovely cup of coffee, uh, maybe lunch um, and along with a view of the sea. So the promenade goes all the way along the beach from one end almost to the other but actually you can walk along the beach um, or to as far as a place called City Kauki, um, which is a lovely little fishing um, village, and there's some nice places there to eat as well if you if you want to go along and, and have something. Um, in the background there, you can see Mogador Island, and when the Portuguese were in Morocco, um, in Essaouira in particular, uh, they used Mogador Island as a prison. Luckily for me, that's no longer the case. Um, you can see there the waves coming in on Essaouira Bay and it's normally fairly windy but actually today um, it's quite a calm day. There's the Medina in the background um, and the fishing port and we'll go there. Um, I'll take you to see that a bit more closely later on. You can see that I've swapped El Jebel in Azilal for El Beher in Essaouira um, and it's a lovely day and although there is um, a bit of wind um, it's quite calm, um, but later on we will um, go to another part of the beach where it's definitely going to be windy and you'll see some of the um, really exciting activities that you can do along the beach. For now, let's just have a walk along and maybe take a closer look at the water. I think perhaps at this time of year the water's quite cold um, and we'll s I'll stick my feet in in a moment and we'll just see how cold it is. Um, people do like to walk along this beach, so actually today I say there's not anybody in the water, but there are still people um, enjoying a walk along, paddling in the water, walking along the sand, taking in um, the view there. You can see again the port and the Medina. Not many waves today um, on the beach, so um, sometimes when it is windy, the waves are um, fairly big, which is what the surfers love, I guess, about it. Oh, and there we are. We finally got my feet in the water. And actually, it's pretty cold, as I thought. But as I said, it is a sunny, warm day. And you can see here, look, the parasols. And people are there enjoying the sunshine, um, enjoying the beach, enjoying the view there, and uh, maybe enjoying some lunch. Essaouira is uh, well known for the windy beach but I think now we've uh, walked along the beach and we're off to the fishing port. So we've 
we're just coming into the fishing port now. Here's the gate, um, which is part of the old ramparts that were built by the Portuguese. As you can see, there's a lot of work going on here to make everything neat and tidy. Now generally, they're doing a lot of work on the um, cobblestones in the Medina, which I'll show you later. But everywhere is getting a bit of a facelift. Um, maybe, although I'm not sure this is just my opinion, um, ready for when tourists start coming back um, in the near future. So hopefully you can see there some of the fishing boats in the port. You can see the ever-present seagulls picking up bits where they can, swooping down and taking them. Here we are now right at the end of the fishing port so we've walked all the way through um, you've had a chance to see the Mogador blue little fishing boats and this is where they come in and out of the port um, and also you've seen the really big assortment of fish that these fishermen bring in here um, sea urchins, whelks, um, all manner of fish um, particularly the Essaouira sardines that are really famous here and you really don't get much fresher than that. You can take those if you buy them here to the Medina and get them cooked or maybe some little restaurants that will cook them for you. Um, but this boat here you can see that they're just getting ready to go out and they're just inviting me down there to join them. I think maybe that's a, a trip for another day perhaps. But they're loading up ice there uh, to keep their catch uh, cool um, and they'll be probably spending most of the day out at sea so uh, that's the best part of the fishing port now and we'll head next to the Medina when I first came to Azalau back in way back in September now um, I was invited to go fishing but more interestingly I was invited to go collecting doodah which turned out to be worms um, and actually for me turned out to be a bit more interesting than the actual fishing itself because whilst I didn't catch any hooter I did catch quite a lot of doodah um, or 
worms. There's always something going on in the fishing port. It's not fishing or selling fish or cooking fish. It's fixing the boats. As you can see behind me there are fishermen painting these boats. I've walked all the way along the front and all the way along the beach and now here we are just outside the Medina so we're here at Babs Bar or the Lion's Gate which is one of the main entrances into uh, the Medina in Asawira. There are two others that I know of, Bab Marrakesh and Marach and Bab Dukala so maybe we'll see those. I'm just going to take you in now and have a look around the Medina at some of my favourite places in the Medina. Maybe for those of you that have been here before, you can see that they have um, re-cobbled this street. So over the last couple of weeks, they've had everything up. I think there's been problems with the sewers, which is not uncommon here, I think. But for now, it all looks very lovely and new. So as we walk down this street, um, there are a couple of little side streets that have got some very nice little shops in, a uh, boutique there, a uh, nice little uh, Lebanese restaurant down there. But if you look down to the end of the street here, you can see a famous landmark in Essaouira, Lor Lorge, the clock tower. Close the view of the clock. And there's the gate that will take us further into the Medina. So you can see they're doing lots of work here down there, uh, renewing the walls of the Medina here and the streets up there. So it's all very busy here, um, trying to make it look nice uh, for when the tourists start to come back. Hello. More work going on here. So I'll come with me down this little street and we'll get a bit closer to the centre of Medina. All these little shops are open. And here with paintings. And plenty of little restaurants as well. Nice little restaurants where you can get lovely fresh fish straight from the market. It's fairly quiet at the moment. Um, but later on in the day, Medina gets busier and busier. And at the moment, we are heading towards one of my very favourite places in the Medina, in the whole of Essaouira, I think. Uh, the best cake shop. Morning, salam alaikum. Here, Patisserie Idris. The best cake shop in Essaouira. Have a look at all those beautiful cakes in the window. And decide which would be your favourite I'll show you my favourite these are my favourite my favourite helwa ok so coming around here we're heading now to the big square um, there's lots of like coffee shops along here there's another favourite place of mine along here which I'll show you in a moment and it's not Quite a few more people here, I think, soaking up the atmosphere, drinking the coffee, and just along here. Uh, where is that? So, just along here on the left is the best, I say the best, it's probably the only one that I have found 
that sells English books. So this is a very lucky view. And when I'm here, I get my supply of English books from there. So I brought you down towards the square because some of my favourite places are here. So also on the corner here, in my opinion, is the absolute best ice cream shop in Essaouira. So we're just coming to that. So I'll just show you so that when you come, you don't waste your time buying the others. You can just come straight here and get the best. So you can also sit and watch people watch. A favourite pastime of mine. Watch the people go by in the square. And here we are, Place Moulay Hassan. And you'll see there, just walking across the street, somebody with a little cart and they're happy to take your luggage so if you arrive on the super tour bus there will be lots of them waiting there to take your luggage in the distance there you can see the fishing port I'm heading up now to um, what is the food market in the Medina um, but first we get to the clothes and um, up here up this street here that leads to Bab Marrakesh and this street here leads up to Bab Dukala. So along here, um, as you can see, lots of clothes, lots of like traditional Moroccan clothes, so lovers, uh, men and women, and scarves in just about every colour and design and material that you could possibly imagine. Um, this is a busier part of the Medina. There's people walk through here to get to um, the food market. Um, up here is the fish market. So you can go in here and buy nice fresh fish straight from the port. Or, of course, you can buy it from here. Um, but if you go to the fish market, they will actually grill all your fish for you and uh, you can sit there and eat it. So you can see there are people here selling fresh milk. Um, I'm not quite sure what those are, but fresh something. Um, Fish. And yeah, let's go. 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 Let's quite a long time actually and I think maybe we'll be beautiful uh, when it's finished and I think it's going to be done. Uh, coming back along this way, so, I discovered yesterday the first time the most amazing shop ever. I have seen this shop before, but never actually been inside until yesterday. And, well, it's not often that I'm lost for words, but as I went up each floor, I was lost for words. So this place is called Kulshi, and uh, as I say, they have some of the most beautiful things in here. Maybe you have a look around here. And as you go up, it just gets better and better. Until at the top there's a little cafe, which is where I'm headed now. So maybe if you see something that you think would look good in my apartment, or you're like me, and you think that everything would look good in my apartment, then let me know what you've seen. Yesterday, I'm heading up to get myself a cup of coffee to see whether maybe this will I can add this to my list of favourite coffee shops in Sevilla. 
but I would just come in here just to look around because you can't possibly see everything in one visit and I don't think there is, not that I've found anyway, there is another shop like it in Essaora. Well, I've made it up all the stairs to the coffee shop at Kulshi and if you have a look out here you can see it's a very nice area to sit. We've got the stairs here. the next door up, up, up. and there are some nice little places to sit and a view more places to sit here look and a lovely view over there and also a really decent cup of coffee so I'm going to add this to my list of coffee shops to come to so this is we make, we make them. We make them uh, from the, the goat skin, leather. Ah, okay, yeah. so I found this nice little shop with lights yeah. in, um, and the man is just telling me that they make these with goat skin. So maybe something here for the apartment. Let me know what you think. Wow, that was such an amazing shop. They had some lovely little lights in there, and I will definitely be going back there to buy some. So what have we here? We're just making our way now through to the other busy street in Medina. There's a door from the door. Some musical instruments there, some little shoes. Everything you could imagine you can buy here. It's almost too much to take in, even though I've been up and down these streets. Bonjour. Um, I've been up and down these streets many times, and every time I come, I see something new. All this beautiful Thailand. There's Nelish, I think. And then here, look. It's great. So hard to choose which colour. We're here at Bhagdukala, just outside the Medina now. Look around, there's a busy place here. There's um, like a taxi rank just there, and also this is like a bus station. Um, so there's a lot of people coming and going, a lot of people coming to um, the market, which is just down that street over right there. I'm not going to go there today, but we're going to have a look again inside the Medina after this end. So there's always uh, lots of people here selling all sorts of stuff um, in the gateway. Um, you can see here dates. So like mobile phone, recharge. Some uh, carts with like vegetables and fruit, and some of them have been hard. And maybe nuts. Oh, so mint, shiba, or um, ate for the tea. It's a really good time of year. The strawberries here at the moment, they're lovely and red and juicy. So we've been buying them. Houses here, so you can see there are clothes here, it's a mixture really. Throughout the Medina, the shops are like a mixture of different things. Um, and here we have like someone selling candy. And sweets and over here cookies. And just everything you could possibly imagine that you can buy here in the Medina. Back down towards the Babsala, and here we see somebody selling eggs. Um, a funny story, like uh, one of the first times that I came to Esawira and 
decided I wanted to buy six eggs. And I went along and first of all found a shop that was actually selling eggs. Um, and then I went in and asked, and at that time, I didn't really speak any Dorija, I didn't even know the numbers, so I tried with my hands to indicate that I wanted six eggs. Um, and the man looked at me, busily started moving eggs from one tray to another, and then put a lid on a tray, and wrapped it up, tied it up with string, and I somehow walked out of the shop with 30 eggs instead of six. Um, I'm still not quite sure how that happened, uh, but nevertheless, yeah, now I can manage to ask for as many as I want. Wait, no, no, no. no. And here we are in another of my favourite places. Um, you can see the mosque there in the background. And I think the reason why this is one of my favourite places, it reminds me of probably, I think, the second time that I came here. And I arrived on the uh, Supratour bus. And I had a big heavy suitcase on wheels. And I dragged it down this uh, road, which, as you can see now, is beautifully cobbled. But at the time, all along here was just gravel and rocks and as I say I was too mean to pay somebody to take my suitcase in a cart and so I dragged it all the way down here and every time I walk down here now I think about that day Sawira is uh, famous for being a windy beach and, and you can see from the activities going on in the background that today is one of those days. So you can ride along the beach on camels or horses or quad bikes if you prefer and that's a really lovely way to see some of the coast of Sawira. In the background there you'll see some kite surfers up enjoying the wind um, today and some surfers in the sea. These are the kinds of activities that you'll see on Essaouira Beach on a normal windy day. So this is my last day in Essaouira and here I am on the lovely Salomon um, and we're here in the ruins of the Palace Sultan. So this was built, I don't know how long ago, uh, by an architect who then sold it to the governor of Essaouira. So some of the important decisions, the law-making decisions in Essaouira were taken in this building. Hopefully you can see behind me the beautiful view, um, maybe the beach and, and the ocean. So we've just come up on the horses with Greggy. Um, he's brought us up here um, along the beautiful beach with the waves rolling in and the sun coming down. It's been an amazing afternoon. Not my first time on a horse, but I'm not an experienced horsewoman by any means. But it's a nice way to finish my trip in Essaouira. Well, that was an amazing ride along the beach. What do you think? Maybe camels next time? So, from camels and horses to something a little bit more relaxing. Um, this is the other side of the beach on Essaouira and it's one of my favourite places to come, especially on a day like today when you can see the waves crashing in on the shore. Um, and it's a, a good place to spend some time contemplating and maybe listening to those Essaouira seagulls. So here we are back at the end of the fishing port um, on the wall, just looking out, you can see the boat going out there. I'm going out for a night's fishing um, and we're back up here now just waiting for the sun to go down. So um, I've had an amazing day I think I would say um, but then of course I visited all my favourite places so I guess I would say that. I hope that you've enjoyed visiting these places with me too. Um, I've been to Morocco several times now and um, on all of those occasions I've, I've come to Essaouira so hopefully I've been able to show you Essaouira at its best. Um, and now I'm going to introduce you to Islam. So 
Uh, he's part of the family that I've been staying with in Azila. And as you can see, he's rather enjoying himself chasing across the beach here and trying to catch the seagulls. Or is he trying to catch them or is he just trying to chase them away? I, I can remember doing this when I was younger or similar. I'm sure probably all of you at some point have done it. And hopefully uh, watching this for a little while has it brought you a bit of a smile to your face. Anyway, I'm going to leave you now with um, some shots of the sunset in Essaouira. So bye for now. Subscribe to the channel if you want more information. Um, and I hope that I will see you soon. Thank you.